Wow, what an amazing turnout. Thank you all for coming. My name is Ariel Schroeder. I am the Deputy Director of the Parks and Recreation Department, and I am holding this special session to discuss the budgeting of the two publicly owned parks near Sedona, Arizona. Red Rock State Park, operated by a public agency, part of the State Park System in Arizona. The other, Crescent Moon Red Rock Crossing Recreation Area, owned by a private company and operated by the USF Forest Service. It's because of you. The USF Forest Service and the public agency of the State Park System in Sedona shine like a jewel on Arizona's beautiful crown. Unfortunately, due to budget constraints this year, we will have to remove a few jewels from that crown. Unless, there is a strategy to optimize an operation through the two parts that directly result financial self-security. Arizona announced it would have to close Red Rock State Park due to budget shortfalls, despite collecting nearly $300,000 a year in admission fees. The park, the park needed hundreds of thousands of dollars of emission tax money to meet its operating costs, money the state does not have. The park also had a growing uh, maintenance backlog, as the years of budget shortfalls forced the park staff to skip critical repairs. However, this doesn't seem to be the case for Red Rock's next-door neighbor, Crescent Moon Ranch, owned by the USF Forest Service. This is peculiar because Red Rock and Crescent Moon are nearly identical parts with similar facilities, visitation, and revenue. The fees and the revenue at this park, however, not only keep the park fully maintained, it supports a visitor center down the road and adds more than $60,000 to the local Forest Service recreation budget, all without requiring tax money to operate. So, why the difference? Aside from the fact that one of the park is run by a public agency and the other is run by a private uh, concession, concessionaire, these two parks are similar in many respects. Both have public bathrooms, picnic areas, group shelters, parking facilities, and walking trails. They are adjacent to each other with similar sized visitor areas and staff gatehouses to collect fees and provide visitor information. Both charge similar entry fees, $10 per vehicle at Red Rock, $9 per vehicle at the privately owned Crescent Moon. But more importantly, the parks are also very similar in revenue and the number of visitors. Both parks earn about the same revenue, approximately uh, $300,000 per year. Though similar in many ways, each park provides a service or offers an experience that cannot be obtained by the other making each park unique in its own way. Red Rock is, has a nice museum and store it operates. Red Rock also offers a nature guide hike every day. Crescent Moon doesn't offer guide hikes. However, it frequently manages weddings in the parks. The private company that owns Crescent Moon is required to use revenue from the park to operate a visitor's informational center in the canyon nearby. But the dramatic difference of the two comes in the park's financial picture, which illustrates the, uh, transform um, which illustrates the transformative power of the park's operation. Red Rock had a um, direct cost of $370,000 plus an estimated $24,000 share of regional agency operated office costs at an additional $120,000 in operation support costs at the state park headquarter level. Hence, Red Rock costs the state $515,000 to operate, but generated only $281,000 in revenue, a loss of $234,000 for Arizona's taxpayers this year. By contrast, the U.S. Forest Service generated revenue at the Crescent Moon that year under a park operation. Uh, the concessionaire paid all park operations expenses from the fees to collect taking those off the USF service balance sheet. The USF Forest, Forest Service received 54000 in revenue from the concessionaire, 18% of great revenue, and only paid for a contrast oversight, an estimated of 10000 yielding the USF Forest a 44,000 operating profit. 
the USS Forest Service often replay, um, replies net revenue generated under the concessionaire back to improvement and new park facilities, keeping the property maintained and preventing the chronic dif differ maintenance in the struggle public sector park system. While the two parks are otherwise very similar, the park operated under a private company generated revenue while the uh, publicly operated park lost taxpayer money. This simple example illustrates how parks can be financially sustainable under a private company, but financially unsustainable under a public operation. Highlighting this point, Red Rock Park was ultimately included on a list of proposed state parks closure aimed to serve state budget pressure in Arizona. So after an all-night strategy session, I have come to um, I've come up with a potential solution to Red Rock's budget crisis. The Red Rock Park will be dissolved and reabsorbed into Crescent Moon. Crescent Moon will provide some of the government service as well as taking on Red Rock Park's debt. I have looked into different alternatives, but this is the only scenario that prevents Red Rock's financial crisis from spiraling throughout the region. This approach has been proven effective in the past. It's called operating state parks through public-private partnerships. Public-private partnerships are one promising solution that would invite the private sector to play a bigger role in keeping state parks open without imposing additional burdens on taxpayers. A park operation public-private partnership would transfer the responsibility of maintaining the state park to a private operator while enabling that operators to raise revenue through insurance and other fees. This is far from a new concept. Many states already successfully use this private concessionaire to provide, di um, to provide district service within the parks such as Colorado, California, Oregon, and Washington. Each have over 100 USF Forest Service recreation areas and campgrounds operated by a private concessionaire. By contrast, park operations under the public-private partnership don't just add a few more dollars in concession fees, they charge an entry cost uh, structure of operating the park, taking the vast majority of its operating costs off the state's books and making them responsibility um, of a concessionaire. In return, the concessionaire pays back to the state in an annual rent set as a percentage of the total net revenue for each park under management. For those parks in which um, exceeds revenue collection today under a house operation, a common situation for many parks and states that use traditional concessionaires and use fees. The public-private partnership model offers the means of transform revenue losing state parks into self-funding assets. So under the terms of the contract between the public agency and the private concessionaire, the partnership combines the oversight and protection of natural resources by public agencies with the opening effect efficiency and customer service of private companies, keeping public parks open and cared for into the next century. Thank you.